I mean, talk about new, talk about, you know, bringing technology into the classroom. Um, you know, I'm sure we've got uh, people wearing heart rate monitors, you know, yep. that, that are sitting here in this discussion. I know that we've talked about iPod, iPads, iPods. We know that there are just a ton of different technology, you know, uses in there. Um, I mean, what do you guys think about it? Um, how can using technology enhance learning in our FIAD programs? And, you know, which, which tools are the best to use and how can we use them? Uh, I know this could be a vast discussion, but uh, keep it as focused as we can. <laughs> I was going to say, for me, I had uh, borrowed some pedometers. And I mean, that's something just small to use, but I haven't seen my kids move that fast in a long time. They are excited about it. You know, you got to get this many steps by the end of, end of class, and or in the next 10 minutes, you have to get 1,000 steps, just the things that they were doing. And I said, go, you know, play a game, <laughs> figure it out. So, and they were just moving, and it was awesome. Like, I've never seen my kids move that fast, so it was phenomenal. So just even bringing something that small into you, into the picture, it was it was great. I mean, I've done other things too, but that was one of them that kind of just blew my mind. Where I didn't think they're going to go for it, but they went for it, and it was quite neat. You know what? I'm just going to throw something out there to connect you and Joe. It's like pedometers in class, pedometers outside class. Yeah, you know, it's no. it's so easy to get. It's so easy to use. Um, and 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 you know. One of the things that Joe said before was, how do you get them active outside of school? Why not throw on a pedometer, too? So yeah. uh, I just wanted to make that connection. Yeah. Well, lots of them asked if they could take it home, too. And I was like, ah. I was like, they're not mine. They're not the schools. I'd let you if it was, you know, the schools. But And then I told them, I was like, well, on your phone, you can find a pedometer on your phone, any type of app that you'd like. And, and then they were pretty pumped about that. So that was kind yeah. of neat. Yeah. I think any anything, no matter – any point of technology that's going to give you give somebody feedback is going to help them learn. You know, again, that's that's why the pedometers work because it's telling them, "Hey, you did this," and yeah. you know, once they've learned that this is how many steps that you should be getting per day as a minimum, and then be building off that. It's it's a great. I mean, I wear my pedometer. My I've got a Fitbit. Yeah, I you love do. It, and I. I feel like I'm lost when I don't have it on. It's like, ah, you know, it's like, almost like you know, the walking or the running didn't count because I don't have it telling me that I did it. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's that great motivation to us. And on the same thing, we're lucky we've got a lot of heart rate monitors. Um, they've, and pedometers will do the same thing. They've given us the freedom to allow the students to choose what they want to do. It's like you are using the heart rate monitor and we are looking at you know, cardiovascular exercise in whatever training zone you, you want to work on for that particular day, but perhaps the means by which you get there is up to you. And that's powerful because, again, like Joe said, you are giving them the option of how they're going to meet that particular goal. You know, I've had students who would happily play some variation of Frisbee all day long. I've had some students who would... They, they, they did ju element, these are high school students, elementary jump rope type activities, and they had a blast. Volleyball. And they made up their own version of how to keep their heart rate. I wasn't convinced they'd keep their heart rate up when they were playing sand volleyball. They proved me completely wrong with what they did. And really? Th and ultimately, they had a great time, and that was, that was the, that's the number one. Thing. The technology, we, we use heart rate monitors and pedometers, but then we have the students, we have uh, 20 activities on a piece of paper. And the students will graph them on a computer, and they'll take those uh, uh, that data home to their parents. And I think that's the next step: is how do we get parents involved? How do we get parents excited about movement? How do we uh, make sure parents understand how movement affects their sleep, their focus, their success in the classroom? And like for us, at some point in time, we should talk about that: is how do we get parents involved? I think that's a huge component for uh, learning and at home. That's a good point. Yeah. Fantastic point. Yeah. yeah, and I guess we will continue to go there, but I just love hearing about what you're doing. I mean, just to take that data and, and, and to give them a chance to look at that data. Um, and, and like you say, just to bring it home and show them. Um, I mean, I just, I guess I'll focus on it just for another second, but I did give a board presentation to our school board, and of course I thought, that they knew exactly what uh, what we were doing and they had no clue. But they were blown away when they saw what we were doing. But it's just continuing to get that voice out um, of what we are doing. So keep it up, everybody. Keep it up. You know, one of the questions that Andy asked was, what comes first, the pedagogy or the technology? And I know some of you on Twitter may have 
uh, been following Dr. Ash Casey, and he spends a lot of time talking about that. And I, as exciting as technology can be, I think it's really important that we make sure when we we are using it that we know why we're using it and that we're using it in an effective way. Um, so I think when people are in their learning groups, I think that's something that really needs to be discussed. You know, because you know we're we all. Um, Kind of like Dory on follow, uh, find, uh, follow, ah, Finding Nemo, the shiny object. Technology can be that shiny object, and we get excited about the gadgets and things that are out there. But to be effective, we want to make sure, you know, we only, like Joe said, he only has them for 25 minutes. So we want to make sure we make the most of it and know what we're using technology for. Yeah. yeah. It's got to work for us rather than against us. And again, we, you know, I'm lucky I, I've got a load of heart rate monitors and some other technology things that I can use, but not everyone has that. What if you have one right. device? What if you have no devices? How can right. you still, how can technology fill a role there? You know, what else can you do? And this, this, that, that's another avenue to explore as well because I think the last thing we want in any of these areas is people think, well, I can't do that because I don't have access. And some of our students as well, you know, will not, you know, you said at a lower level, it's not a, quite a BYOD um, situation at you know the elementary level in particular um, but even as you get higher up not everyone has their own device so we need to be making sure that we're being inclusive with or without it. I guess I'll kind of continue on with it too and uh, you know knowing exactly what you're going to use that technology for obviously very important as it was talked about and I know P and Nathan just kind of used it Nathan Horn just kind of used what Ash Casey was talking about in one of his presentations but uh, the other thing I want to reiterate is you, you can't just try one technology thing once and think it's going to be you know vastly successful um, as Joe said before you know you're going to fail once um, and it's just your first attempt at learning but you know mm -hmm. sometimes the kids need to get accustomed to how to use it how does it work and it's going to take some time to incorporate it to really make it you know a, a good valid tool too so you know don't just try it once and give up uh, you know, find that appropriate time, find that exact use to to help you assess or to help you, you know, drive that point home with your students. Um, but just understand that it does take time, as everything as everything good does. So.